straight up community of artists learning about each other, learning about things that we should be doing within our sector, and just pretty much bringing that, I guess, community online, you know, whereas though if it's not an event that you can go to and watch these other artists, who shouts out to uh, Kay Woods and Josh Shido, uh, if it's not any venues you can go to or anything like that, I'd much rather have that online, so hopefully we can do that. With Inside the Rapper Studio, which we have. So, thank each and every one of you. Seriously, I, I really do appreciate it. Um, once we get the guest, uh, Lamatic on, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, hopefully, everybody's having a solid uh, Friday. This is probably the first Friday where... Uh, <laughs> these are not cardio. Oh, stop that. Stop that. I'm a very cheap person. You know that personally. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, uh, hopefully everybody's having a solid Friday. I think this week has been really, really monumental for me on a personal note. Uh, just really learning about myself and learning about my flaws and strengths and how to really use them both. But this isn't my diary. This is my show. So I just sent the request to uh, Lamatic. Hopefully we can get on in the next 30 to 60 seconds. Um, see what we got in the building. Uh... If nobody else knows in this live, um, K was just dropped an awesome video called Shouty, featuring Burnout, uh, Finagle Parts Own, my ad. Uh, it's really good. Check that out. It's on YouTube. It's also on streaming. It's also on the album Valora, which is also on streaming. So I want you guys to check that out. Uh, views by Cam, an amazing, an amazing, amazing, amazing photographer from, of course, Baltimore. Uh, does a lot of work within, um, just photography, he's getting his foot in videography, which I've peeped. Yes, I'm paying attention. Really great job over there. So, huge shouts out to all you guys. Also, Josh Shido. And then me, ah, star of the show has already arrived. But Josh Shido, an amazing, amazing um, producer in the city as well. So, hopefully, everybody get to check him out. We got uh, episode 85 about to roll on. Woo. Good water. Can you hear me, bro? Yeah, I hear you, bro. What's good? All right, let's get it started. Episode 85 of Inside the Rapper Studio. Today we have an amazing, amazing guest on the show. He wrote Saw Sinatra, amazing project. Also wrote 11-11, amazing single. Great visuals. Fucking summer up. I'm pretty sure I don't have to introduce him, but being as though I'm a host, I have to do my fucking job. So... I want everybody to drop likes, drop hearts, drop comments. Well, the one, the only, Lamatic. Hey, what's up? What's good? What's going on? How you feeling today, brother? Man, I'm cool, bro. I had to go out to the car. My little daughter, sweet man. I ain't trying to <laughs> man. I feel that, man. I feel that. I feel that. With every episode of Inside the Rapper's Studio, there is an origin story told from the bottom of the screen. So, could you tell us how everything got started musically for the artists we all know and love as Um, let me think, man. To be honest, bro, the music, bro, that shit. I started in 2013, um, but then I stopped. I stopped for like, I see like four or five years. I, I just said, mm. fuck music. I ain't really want to do it. And then, um, at the while, I just said fuck it and start doing that shit again. That's when I really started to like it again. Like, I like at first I was just doing it for recreation type shit. But then after a while, when I when I restarted it, I kind of could build a little brand and I started getting into it like that for real. So that's that's how that went. As far as the music, but like you know, that shit. I start like I said. I started in 2013. My mind wasn't really on it. Like, I what my mind wasn't. Oh yeah, I want to be a rapper. It was kind of like, oh, I can rap, so I'm gonna do it. And then, um, that's just how that all came about. Um, yeah. And then, like I said, once 2017 hit, that's when I was like, all right, I'm gonna take it serious. So, how has it been since that shift in perception when it comes to like? the value of music to you and actually like doing it and becoming an artist. Oh man. Bro, to be honest with you, all the way honest, bro, when it comes to music, it's like 
it's so hard to explain because I just like doing music. Like it ain't even really like it's a uh it's so hard to explain when it comes to music, bro. Like it's it's like really hard because I never like you know, I don't really like I, I never really wanted to be famous. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know if I could deal with the pressure because it's too much going on, you know, people are all in your business and whatnot. And I don't, I, I kind of like living a life for where though I could just live my life comfortably. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you feel as though the celebrity job of being a rapper or supposedly a celebrity job, cut, does it really interfere with like pretty much the art of it? Whereas though all you really want to do is just express yourself and like make these songs and hit the studio and shit like that. Shit, I, I I think back in the day, it was it was more so industry based. Like I feel like it was less being yourself. Like most artists started out they popped from being themselves, but then they kind of switched it to what the label might have wanted them to do. They might have wanted them to make certain certain type of songs to make money off a different crowd. But now music kind of is going in the direction of just be yourself because you can be your own boss you don't have to be signed no more you don't have to uh you don't have, you don't have to really do what nobody say because the internet's so powerful now you know back in the day when the internet wasn't powerful it was kind of like i would say like all right well we the label so we gonna be the ones that make you make money and be rich and be famous so you gotta do what we say now it's like the internet can pop you or drop you like that quick. The internet is that serious now. You can say one wrong thing and be done. You can say had a one good song and blow up. That's why I tell artists all the time, like, bro, don't trip. Like it only take one song. Like literally one 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 visual can blow you up to the whole world. How do you feel about having the internet be such a powerful tool in a time like this as an artist? Because like with everything shut down, you can't really hit venues, you can't really do shows and things like that. And with these restrictions, how would it reflect to kind of like do what you need to do now as an artist? Um, man, this shit fucking everything up, man. I've been wanting to drop my album for a while, but um. I just be working on new songs, so it's like it's really fucking up the shows and getting a new reach and trying to make some shit happen. Like it's hard to make shit happen with uh, when you can't perform and you can't literally be in new people's spaces, so new people can, you know, because certain people might just like your aura or like, oh, I like how you carry yourself, so I'm gonna give them a try. They gotta go strictly based off the internet now. That's how everything working. Yeah. Does that put like certain artists at a disadvantage or an advantage? Because you can already see like certain people will have like a certain pop right now before Corona, after Corona, they got a whole buzz. Uh, I, to be honest, I think it's harder now. It's harder. It's harder to is if you know how to work the internet, it's easy. If you don't know how to work the internet like that, if you're just a person that just like to make music. Like, certain people might not have good visuals, but they might have good music, and that, if you don't know how to work the internet, it ain't going to work in your favor now. You know, you might could have had a good song, and you might could perform it, and people might grasp to it. Like, you never know who you might perform in front of. They might grasp to it, so that's how I look at it when it comes to this kind of internet game. Like, you got to play the internet. I honestly, if I could, like, editorialize for a second, Honestly, I really don't like the idea of pretty much the internet game, whereas though like the persona that anybody anything that you can put on a screen, whether it's true or false, can make or break you, rather than the actual people like getting their like hands on you physically and just like really grasp who you are as a person. Do you kind yeah. of feel the same way? Yeah, man, because you know a lot of people. You know, I, I had people come up to me all the time, like, on some surprise and shit, like, damn, I'm surprised, like, you know, a lot of people, you know, I'd be happy, a lot of people say, like, I'm one of their favorite rappers in Baltimore, and people would ask me, like, bro, why don't you, like, what, what, what is, like, why haven't you, like, peaked at the Baltimore 
shit yet. Like, like you kind of got two different crowds that you cater to. So, you know, and I just, you know, it's because a lot of people living fake lives over the internet. You know, people selling themselves. I can't do that. I can only be me if it ain't meant for me. If it ain't meant for me to uh blow up, that's cool. But I can't sell myself short or sell myself to be nothing that I'm not. I can't. I can't do that. I can only be who I am, the person that I am. I I'm not posting hella guns and videos. I'm not posting all this money because I know what comes with that. Exactly. A lot of people, you know, they got post signs and they got people, you know, they, they might not be the toughest individual, but they might have tough people behind them and they banking on them. But I got me. So, you know, I, I'm ready for whatever come my way. But at the end of the day, it's like, you know, I don't play the internet games. You know, I, I joke some plays, but when it comes to my music, you know, I uh, I kind of keep it strictly music. I just want you to hear what I got to say and try to, you know, get in and get out and do my thing. But I record so much. But I definitely, I'm going to step the visuals up. Like, I ain't got to sell myself, but I might do a little bit more to put more of my personality into the music videos from now on. Gotcha. Do you feel as though, like, when it comes to having the internet used as a tool and using music to, like, push that and stuff like that, do you feel like people bastardize the art that way, whereas though they kind of, like, just put, like, dirt on it, whereas though back in the day, people would legitimately know if that's you or not, you know what I mean, instead of the persona that you put on the internet. So do you feel as though that kind of ruined hip-hop in a sense? Yeah, but it ain't too many... You know, all these rappers want to, you know, be gangster and do all of this gang gangster shit. But man, nine out of ten of them, they just regular people. I mean, I don't know, you know, if they bitches or whatnot. But I met a lot of them. I don't get that vibe from them. Like they seem a lot of these dudes seem like cool people to me. But you, you know, they get on the internet. They gang gang and they doing all this extracurricular shit that I don't vouch for. And but I mean if that's what's that's what's selling them records, then that's what's selling them records. So hey, brother, salute to you, but just know what come with that. Cause I do. Absolutely, absolutely. Huge shouts out to the man for a great interview so far. I'm gonna give a few shouts out to everybody that's in the live right now. Huge shouts out to Life of Ron. Shouts out to 91 Darby. We got a wing. Wings is, I want to say I'm pronouncing that right. I see it all the time. I don't know how to pronounce it. Shouts out to my mans, though. Shouts out to Gov Gotti. We got Bright Shade in here. Bougie Land. So, first thing I wanted to talk to you about musically is the album that you dropped, not 2019, Saw Sinatra. Tell us what it took to make a project like this. Bro, I'm going to keep it all the way 100 with you. That, that shit was, it wasn't even supposed to be a project, bro. That shit was just... I really wish I had kept some of them songs. Because hmm. I just put it out just to put something out. You know what I'm saying? I really, when it comes to my Forever series, that's what I take serious. Like, what I'm ready to drop Forever 2. Those are my serious, I'm dead ass about these. So, Sinatra was kind of like, I was just having fun at the time. So, I just put it out and I just waited. And plus, I didn't want to go too long without dropping some music. So, I, uh, I, I let it go. I let it fly. You know, I ain't even, I don't even think I shot no videos for nothing off of South Sinatra because it was literally just some shit that I was just like, you know, I pan fit. Those songs, like, I think it's about 12, 13 songs. Those are literally the the first 12, 13 songs I recorded of that year and just put them out. Damn. Well, well I guess for that matter, like, that makes a lot of sense because, like, it feels though when you have those series albums, because most artists have like a series of albums. Like Raekwon got only built for links two, mm -hmm. like you know the blueprint, pink print, or like shit like that. They have those series. So how does it compare to have that series album to come out, and then you have that essentially have fun album? Um, well, shit, this one it go more in depth. Like it's more pen work, like. A lot of them songs off Sauce and Sinatra was like, 
off the head. I'm just in there rapping, coming up with stupid shit, and picking what's working and shit. But forever is like me really crafting the whole shit from beginning to end. Like that's how that's how I uh I carry the forever. So that's why I, like I'm really happy. I'm gonna be happy when I drop this. It's gonna it's gonna mean a lot. Do we have a release date? Now that you have to say it. I don't have a release date just because um I'm still waiting on one feature. It was some difficulties with the beat. So we trying to figure that out. All the songs are done. The songs are done. So everything is done just for one song. But then you know I gotta come up with a rollout and pick a video and that's the part that takes time. And, you know, promoting and all of that shit. So it'll definitely be before the summer's over, though. I'll hold you to it. I'll hold you to it. So first time I want to talk to you about within uh, Saw Sinatra is Gorgeous featuring A1 Bing. Talk to us about making this song with this uh, with the featured artist. Uh, well, shit, me and Bing, we linked up. We linked up. <laughs> Um, he shot the Wicked Love video. Mm. He, yeah, he shot the Wicked Love video. So you know, me and him kind of built a little relationship, and we was talking, and uh, it was just genuine for real. You know what I'm saying? We had some mutual friends too, so that kind of put us together. And then um, I was like, "Yo, I got the song for you," and I had that. Cause I was like, you only need a feature. So I asked him, and he sent that shit back in a day. We like, love. So I got you. We love to hear it. Honestly, like I love when I get that whole story about when it comes to a song and the artist doesn't bluff on it, and it comes back like within two days, and like shit's already smoothing out. Do you get that like experience a lot when it comes to features, or is it like a mixed bag, like pretty much working with different people? Um. When I first started rapping, I had a tough time with the feature thing, man. Like, when I first started again in, like, 2016, uh, the only, the only like, big-name person that was working with me, like, on some humble shit was Soda. Mm. Like, Soda, but that, that's my guy. That's my man, though, but he had, never, he had never even heard me rap. Like, yo, just, we just was cool like that. Yo was just like, man, fuck it. Let's go do a song. He didn't know what the fuck he was ready to sign up for. <laughs> I could have went in there and said anything. He ain't know what he was signing up for. So when we got in there, it was kind of like just clicking, like. And I be with Soda like every day. You know I mean? Like I be with Soda like every day. So that shit was just. But normally a lot of niggas give me a lot of. Oh yeah, let's work. And they just stop talking about it and shit like that. So I remember all that shit. You know, friend. So I be telling niggas, you know, don't come at me with no shit now, cause I ain't doing it. Facts. Yo, so how is it working with an artist that you have like a bond with? Like working with somebody that knows you, working with somebody that you pretty much had that chemistry with. How is it working with a person that just clicks with you? It's crazy because I got a lot of features on this on this new thing, but. Everybody that is on the tape, I built a relationship with them first. Like Butch, I built a relationship with Butch. Al Rogers, I built a relationship with Al Rogers. D Dave, I built a relationship with D Dave. Um, me and Chris Cash has always uh, worked together. He all like he always at the studio when I'm mad. So that's uh, when it come to uh. Chris, man, I'm always working and doing shit. Like, um, Ice, I knew Ice since middle school. I mean, Ice went to middle and high school together. Um, they won. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? I feel like I'm missing somebody. Oh, um, your soda's on it, of course. Um, Butch, I love this. Soda. Uh, I think that might, that might be it. It was supposed to, now I'm trying, I was trying to get something with Cam. And 4K Michael, so we, I might can still, you know, make that happen, but we just working, we just waiting. If even if I don't get them on the album, we gonna get something done. That's what's up. 
I feel like that's the best thing to have, and especially when it comes to like that timing shit. Whereas though they don't get it just in time, but you get them at another time, and it's always perfect that way. Yeah, just because I be wanting people to, you know, bring their a game. Like I don't want, I don't want nobody to, cause I ain't gonna lie, I take my shit serious. So if you shit balling, I take you right off. I take you very straight off. It ain't nothing personal. People that sent me, uh. People that sent me, sent me, I didn't send people songs, they sent me some shit back. And I'd be like, bro, I wouldn't even be real if I got to keep it real with you, bro. I don't like this. You got to do that. It's your art. But it's theirs too. Like, this is what you want people to hear when they come to your name. Like, I take features dead ass serious. I don't play around with you. I take features probably more serious than I take my own shit. Because I know motherfuckers are. Uh, I first heard the Kendrick Lamar when he was on the game song. Absolutely. Absolutely. He smoked that shit and then I kind of was like, shit, who the fuck is this? He wildin'. Like, real shit. So, that's how, you know, features, you know, they cool, but I'd rather work with cool people. I don't like working with people who have all these egos and shit like that. I don't, I don't like all that because it's, it, it's supposed to be chemistry in the studio. All that, all that. Act like you better than people shit. I don't be with all that. The perfect comment just actually just landed. It's friendly competition. That's all it really is. And speaking yeah, of definitely. and speaking of friendly competition, I definitely have to mention pretty much the rivalry between Baltimore and DMV. More recently this year, there's a little bit of static going on in terms of like, I guess somewhat of a beef or somewhat of a um essentially somebody said some words. But it's always been some shit when it comes to Baltimore and PG. Um, what's your take on the rivalry that's been going on for pretty much decades? Man, to be honest, that shit ain't about nothing. It's just a whole bunch of you. It's we only live forty five minutes from each other, and we live different lives. And that's all it is for real. I didn't went. I didn't went to school, and I'm cool with a whole bunch of PG niggas. I've never been in a situation where I've ever been with a PG or DC nigga and they've ever said something wild or loose. Or even me being around DC niggas and, like, I've been in a situation where, well, I mean, I've had DC. I have, I've had problems with DC people before, but, I mean, I had problems with Baltimore people before, so that shit ain't about nothing. It's personal. Yeah, it is what it is, but mostly when I meet DC and PG people, they be cool. Like, the girls, the guys, they cool. That shit just was on some, I want to say my little piece. Gotcha. I was listening to other people do it, so I'm like, all right, well, I can do it. And this kind of in my lane, because I go, I can go, if I got one subject to rap about, I can do that shit all day. Absolutely. I feel like it always stems from some, like, really petty shit, and it's really just a sign of us not being really good neighbors. Do you feel as though, like, we're not really good neighbors towards, like, either side? Uh, I wouldn't say we wasn't good neighbors for real. I mean, if we keeping the real bottom of niggas when we party, we go to D.C. Every time I party in D.C., I ain't never had no bad vibes. I ain't never had nobody say nothing while I was in the club and niggas, everybody in there just having fun. It ain't nothing that serious for real. A lot of niggas, you know, everybody want to be Mr. Tough Guy. You know, everybody too gangster for me. I just be trying to chill, have a little cup of handy. And be <laughs> you see niggas can come down here, I wouldn't say nothing to them. Right. Have it's, your fun. It's just a matter of really just, like, not being a dickhead. Because, like, it's a ma- Granted, I've had, like, two years that I spent in D.C., and I really was expecting that shit. Like, all right, I'm the Baltimore nigga. I'm pretty much the away team. I'm about to get a bunch of say two and shit like that. But them niggas just chilling. They really didn't do, they really didn't do that much. It's just a matter of how it's perceived. And I really feel like it's badly perceived in terms of not just social media, but media in general. What there is no rivalry. We're just neighbors. Yeah, real shit. That's like but DC PG people, they be beefing with Virginia people. Like That's- I just seen them talk I just seen them talk, <laughs> talking crazy about each other. So it's like, man, you can't even trip about no shit like DC PG, cause that shit going that is what it is. Like People, man, you know, I, it was hella PG and DC people fucking with my diss. Like, yo, he going crazy. This nigga nice, blah, blah, blah. You had a couple people saying, you know, they 
just a tough gangster guy. I didn't got threats in my DMs and all types of wild shit about that dish, but on the real, I be just looking like y'all niggas crazy because I come out there and will be walking around that motherfucker living my best life because I'm not worried about nothing. Playing I ain't yourself. calling nobody a bitch or whore or nothing, but I'm not worried about that shit because if it was really ever really a problem, because I, I could see if I said something that I'm like, all right, I know what's coming with this. I ain't seen nothing crazy. Than, I ain't seen nothing crazy than them people for real. You know, they just over there acting, acting the ass for real, just doing shit out of. They want to be. They want a little lights or whatever on the ground. They want to say some tough gangster shit, but I don't worry about that shit. It's the showbiz, unfortunately. Speaking of DMV, I want to get into the song that she came out with. I'm gonna stay humble. Ish DMV flow. Talk to us about collabing with them and making this song together. She, Ish, that's my nigga for real. Um, me and Ish go back too. We built a relationship before the music shit for real. I think uh, when he had came out with the DMV Flow Part 1, you know, I, I respected it for real because no bottom artists did that before. So I respected that shit. Like, damn, that's, that's some good shit for real. And then um, after a while, you know, we was, you know, I didn't link up with him a couple times and shit. I I was like, yo, I, shit, I, I did one kind. It was kind of DMV Flow for real, but he was like, shit, let me get on that shit. So I was like, all right, well, cool. You know what I'm saying? So we just put that shit out. That was just another little quick song that I just I didn't even know what to do with for real. And I wasn't I wasn't gonna do nothing until ish they done jump on that shit. So that's not that one. Is it usually like a captain speed thing when it comes to the verses? Cause every time like we've mentioned the song, it's like I did that shit in a day, I did that shit in a couple hours, I did that shit in like two minutes. Is it usually like as fast as you write it, or is it like different times or different songs? All my the, all my favorite songs are I wrote them in about fifteen twenty minutes. I record them in I record all my songs in like five ten minutes. When I go to the studio, I'm already ready. I already know what I, like to hear is, that. I already know what highlights I'm using. I know what I'm I know what I'm doing already. So I'm getting straight to the mixing part when they get to the studio. I already know. It's just about how I might. Sometimes I'd have recorded shit, thought it was going to be all right, then it wasn't all right for real. So, but I'd also recorded like a lot of shit, like like that shit right there. That's a freestyle. Like I didn't write that. Ah. Oh. Is it usually like? A, do you usually like not write, or is it like any like any way how you feel? Uh. I normally write some a lot some freestyles I don't write because I like to catch the beat. So I take I take my time with freestyles. Like I don't go in there and uh be on some shit like with freestyles. Like I be I kinda take my time with those. It's like some days I go in the booth in the studio and I'm only doing features. Like I don't like mixing features with my songs. Like I like the yo, I'm ready to come here and do these little two, three verses for these niggas and try to get them up out of here. Cause I still got like ten verses to do for people. How is it having structure with your studio time? Cause not a lot of rappers really just go in. All right, I'm gonna do this four hours. Fuck it, let's go and just do whatever. Whereas though you come in with like a mission in hand. How do you feel as though that kind of like sets you apart from other people? To be honest, bro, I I, I watched a lot of rappers, but I would say it's only a couple that really write that I know, like. A lot of rappers that I meet don't write, like, or when they have it around me, like, Soda doesn't write, uh, Butch didn't write nothing when we did our shit, um, but I know Butch does write occasionally, but I know he didn't write when we was, when we was there, but, uh, Ice, Ice kinda, D-Dave wrote, like, D-Dave came prepared, like, he wrote. But when I go into the studio, I already know how much time I got. So I know that one hour is going to be 15, 20 minutes of recording. Other 40 is getting mixed. Like, let's just say for all right, if I'm if I'm in the studio from 1 to 3, 1 to, one to 120, I'm recording. 120 to 2 o'clock, we mixing a first mix. Two o'clock, I'm on the next song. It's the same process. So we, it's like we kind of break it straight down. Like, I, I'll leave out 
and be like, yo, I'm ready to run to the store or something. I'll be back at this time. And then I'll come at like five minutes. And then as soon as they hit two o'clock, we on to the next one. Like, that's just how, that's how I, that's how I do it. And then if like out the mix kind of janky or whatever, we'll come back and revisit the whole shit. It's two words that come to mind throughout that whole process. Time management. That's time management and that's how you use it. A lot of people really have a problem when it comes to time management and really being in the studio and really managing your time, especially when you have to pay for studio time and not really knock out shit you're supposed to and stuff like that. How a, lot, a lot of niggas be in the studio with too many people. I don't like that. I like to record when it's just me. I don't like... If I could bring somebody to the studio, it'd be one, two people. Like, I go in studio sessions and it's like 20 niggas in there and it's like that's how you lose time. You get to talking, conversing, bullshitting around. You know, niggas drinking, niggas smoking. So everybody doing their own thing. Next thing you know, you don't waste two hours. You've been in, you booked four hours. You don't waste two talking. You only got one and a half song done in four hours because you were shitballing around. I went to the studio and brought some niggas with me one day for real. And I, but they came with my minds. But I told my minds, hey, yo. Don't bring no more niggas through it. I don't like that. It was too much talking going on, too much conversing. I don't like all that. That get me off my track, of my train of thought. I like just being there by myself, me and the engineer. Or uh, Chris being there a lot when I record, too, for real. Like, when I record, Chris being there, and he, uh, but niggas know, like, when I'm recording, bro, all that talk and shit, kind of, like, we ain't even in here for that. We can talk. Cause I don't even want you talking while he trying to mix. Like it's straight quiet time. Like we in here working. Like I don't be with all that. All the people in the studio, man. That's a dead mission. Now I mean, if it's your session and I'm recording doing a uh, feature in your session, you go ahead and handle how you want to handle. But you ever come to my session? Don't bring hell of niggas in my session for real. I don't be with all that. Don't bring hell of niggas in my session. Cause I don't like to fuck around with the time. Now I'm paying for this shit. So. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, sometimes I'm already hip. So sometimes I might book three, four hours and I only got two songs written. But when it's a feature, I always got to be like, I don't know how he record. So I'm going to give him a little extra time to get his shit together. But I don't be with, uh, I don't like the hell of people in the studio when I record. No, that's completely understandable. And like hearing that from somebody else actually makes 100% like sure of like what I do because I'd be feeling like a certain way like I don't really have nobody when I record like all I really have that needs to like do their verse or me and I'm just going and it's like you need to do something here all right cool put it in here or do you need to put something in this song all right you're here but otherwise it's just me and it's great to hear that from somebody else it's like all right it makes sense like it's business time where I'm paying for fucking studio time and people just don't see it that way at all but I mean, hey, that's they that's they shit. They do that shit how they wanna do it. That's cool. That's what work for them, that's what work for them. I know when I'm in there, when I'm in there, it's strictly business. So. Absolutely. Great, great, great interview so far. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Lamatic. Uh huge shouts out to everybody that's in the live right now. Of course, do another little roll through. Shouts out to Low uh Low Life Leo. Shouts out to Kiss Me on British. D18 Nye, we got AJBV, Toxitasia, Mo E. Man, you got a little crowd in here. Jeez Louise. All right. <laughs> so, next thing I wanted to talk to you about is what is next for Lematic? Um, shit, I, I'm working on my album, man. My album, that's what I'm really, bro, I put in a lot of time with this one. So, I'm really, um, Man, that's what I'm focusing on, picking up, picking which one I want to make my, uh, like, what I want to make my single. Um, I want to see what um, what I'm trying to do as far as, like, planning and all of that shit. But, yeah, I'm trying, you know, I'm trying, you know, figure that shit out. But I'm really focusing on my album right now. Other than that, man, I've been watch, sitting back and watching other niggas drop music, listening to their shit. You know, just being a fan of some Baltimore local shit going on. I like to do that from time to time. I be really listening to the artists from here. I could appreciate that. A lot of people don't know how to be fans again when it comes to, like, music and stuff like that. Do you feel as though, like, people can really balance being a fan and working for 
music as well? Uh, a lot of niggas don't want to say they're a fan. Like, but uh, I, niggas got, like, you know, I guess the word fan, I think it would be better, supporter. Supporter, there you go. I don't really like the word fan. But, uh, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't know, bro. I really don't know. It be times where people didn't say they listen to my shit that I would have never thought listening to my shit ever. So I'd be like, damn, I didn't know you was listening to my shit. The people be walking up to me telling me they be bumping my shit. And I'd be like, yo, these streams coming from somewhere. <laughs> I don't know who the fuck listening to my shit. Cause yo, my like my music video streams and my my song streams are on like two completely different levels. And I'm trying to get my video streams up with the music streams. So that's what I'm really planning on, man. I need I need to put more thought behind my videos, put more money into them. Uh, now, but, when you say, I'm sorry. Now, when you say video streams, do you mean YouTube? Yeah. Got you. Yeah, because like you... My, my music streams, they be doing they be doing just as much numbers as a lot of other niggas that's popping. Like my my music streams oh, do a lot of numbers. But my videos don't be doing a lot of numbers, but maybe it's I I just took that in charge. That is me. Like maybe I need to step something up. You feel me and do something different. I ain't, I ain't gonna blame nobody else for something that I could do. I might need to change. You think it's a marketing thing? I don't even think it's a marketing thing. I just think it's a me thing. I don't think I think I'm not putting enough thought and effort into the music videos that I should be doing. Mm -hmm. So I take accountability for that. Um you know, I I ain't been putting my I ain't been putting my foot into I ain't putting the same effort in the videos as I am for the music. And that's where I think it comes in a difference. Cause you know people see me on Twitter and shit in the music videos, they don't really show my lively side. So I'm going to start flipping it up a little bit from now on. Gotcha. Pretty much putting more of that personality within the music videos as much as you do within the music. Hell yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Do you, what would you say is your favorite music video? Mm, probably Wicked Love. Mmm, that's different. That's different. Explain why. I mean, that's my favorite song of mine. Well, other than I got, I got two or three songs on the new album that I think I like more than Wicked Love. But Wicked Love is my favorite song that's out to the public. Because mm. that's the kind of what direction that I like to go with in my music, like more so talking to people. Like we could, you know, we could swag rap all day. That shit is easy. Swag Easy. rapping is not hard. I can sit and talk about anything. But when it comes to straight up, like, actual, like, narrative, actual, like, communication and the story and actually giving it to the people, you'd much rather put more thought into those videos. Yeah. No, I, I, I to be honest, I want to put more thought into the live videos, like the videos that's high pitch. High, you know, banging because I can really show my my lively side. Like I could really, you know, get lit. You know, right. that's that's what I'm really focusing on. Like, that's why from now on, because I really don't know what my single will be because I like literally all every song. Like I don't know what what song gonna be my single. That's probably the best problem to have as an artist. <laughs> Cause like, I ain't never, but I ain't never felt like this about a project. Like normally, when I go on a project, I be like, "This is the one." Right. Like when I did Fab, I'm like, "Wicked Love, that's the one." Right. Star so Sinatra, I was gonna do Smoother or make it out as the one. Um. This one is gonna be tough. It was to the point where now we think about keeping some good songs off of it just to make them singles after the album. Easy. So, you know, that's the that's the direction that I'm going for into now. But also always remaining humble in the process and remembering 
you know, anything can happen, be ready for anything. So that's all I've been working on, is just being ready for anything that come my way. But I feel like I ain't going to get out, get out of what I want in music until I put in what I want. Because anybody can go in there and rap. I got to put the extra step into everything else. Absolutely. So before we go, I really have to get into this last uh, song, 1111. Tell us where you were making this song and pretty much the process of making it. Uh, man, that song was so fluent to write because I was really just writing down what I was going through. Like, my man Mike, Mike had just got killed. So that's why I say I just, you know, just found him at a shot the other day. Shit like that. All that shit was just running through my mind. I was in like a little fucked up mind state uh, at the time. So that's how that song came about. And then after that, I just started, it just started becoming natural. Like once I come up with the first four lines to a song, that always be the problem is what I'm going to say first. Then after four that, bars. Yeah, that's what I start. After that, it just starts flowing. Like, I can flow easily off that, but it's all about how I started. When I came in, when I when I first said that shit, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to write it down. And that song, man, that shit. That was really going to be on the album, but mm. I made a I made a, a, a another one of those type songs that two, two of those type songs that I feel like are better than that. Gotcha. So I kept those, and I dropped that one. Gotcha. You had a part two to this song as well, right? Mm -hmm. So, what inspired the part two? Uh, same shit, bro. I was just going through some mental things. Uh, well, you know, I ain't really the type of person that, you know, really talk about what I go through or not like that. But music, that's my way of talking and people to listen because people be going through the same things. Absolutely. You know, I ain't really a, a high person of, damn, I'm ready, you know, I'm going through this today. I'm going through that. I don't like to do all of that because you never know what somebody else going through. That shit could be worse than what I'm going through. So I just be like, I ain't going to complain about it, you know, but I can write, you know, tell my story. And that's why I'm so happy about this album because I get to really tell my story, like, like, I really get to go into depth about a lot of shit. Like, even if it's on high, and I think because people hear the auto team, that they don't really listen to what the fuck I'm really saying. I hate that. I because hate that. I done heard a lot of people, you know, crack jokes on me and shit and be like, you know, he an auto team, nigga, bop, bop, bop. But I'm like, you all must not be listening to what I be saying for real. Like, you, you obviously can't be listening to what I'm talking about. Like, I had. I seen somebody comment a post, comment on one of uh, posts on the, the DMV hood news page. And I comment, it just stuck with me. He was like, yeah, I just went through his page. Um, he not even that type of guy. He an auto-tune rapper. Um, he's sweet for real. And that's why I'm like, yeah, he probably don't really listen to what the fuck I'm really saying because I'm, I don't say nothing sweet. But it just because I ain't yelling that shit and a whole bunch of gun ad lids, I don't mean that I ain't rapping about it. You just not listening to what I'm saying. If you listening, you'll understand. Because people, even when I, with no love, if people, when people hear no love, they per, first thing they're going to think of is, oh, this some old club shit. But they not really listening to what the fuck I'm really saying. If you listen to what I'm really saying, I'm really talking hella shit. Talking about hella shit. But, you know, People will probably pick up on it. Like, they, this is going to be more so for the car rides. Like, you probably going to listen. You might skip us. You know how you be skipping songs, and then one day it just accidentally play. And you be like, damn, what was this? I'm like, damn, I slept on this song. That shit happened to me this week, my nigga. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's why I'm saying, like, you going to hear, you going to hear what I got to see for real, like, yeah, this gonna be this gonna be a go. This gonna be a go. That's what we love to hear. Really, really, really grateful for this interview. Thank you so much, Romantic. I really do appreciate it for taking the time out to answer these questions and having me pretty much go straight. Uh, they were my boy Soda right there. 
Oh, speaking of that one, you shot out the song. It is what it is, bro. So, yeah. Lamatic, do you have any last words, any last promotions, any last propaganda for the people? Um, man, shit, man, I'll be just telling people, man, I'm just trying. I'm trying. I got some shit up my sleeve that I'm working on. And I ain't never, I ain't never, I ain't gonna lie to niggas, I ain't never record this much, like, to have these, this, these many songs, this many songs to choose from. Like, I literally got, like, I've been recording since, what, December of 2018. Until now. So I got a whole catalog of songs to really pick from. So, but I know when people hear this shit, it's going to be different. Like, I got so much different type of beats. Like, it's going to be different for real. Like, yo, say yo, T Greedy up top. <laughs> it's a presentation, man. I keep telling people it's a fucking TV show. Like, it's not just live. I'm bringing you a production. My That's man said he greedy. <laughs> I, I, I know how to take a compliment nowadays. Thank, thank all y'all. Appreciate it. And thank you, especially, for joining me today and really actually getting to know an artist from an artist's perspective. I really do appreciate it. So, coming up next on Inside the Rapper Studio, next week is going to be All-Star Week. That's right. So, everybody that was on from pretty much weeks before is going to be on this week. I'm not going to list who it is. I'm pretty sure you guys got an idea of it, but you'll figure it out later. Tomorrow, we got the world premiere of the video shelf. Going live with the interview before that and having director's commentary an hour after. Check all that out. I really appreciate everybody that's been in this live for one minute, one second, one hour. Really appreciate IG for not fucking up because I was really expecting it. It always happens on a Friday, but it didn't happen. And most importantly, I'd like to thank you, Lamad. Thank you very Man, much. Man, I appreciate you too, bro. Make sure you see this show outside and right, right, screen recording and, and, you know, post some clips and shit. All my lives go on IGTV. You can legit go through the whole catalog. You're going to be right there. Don't all right, my guy. Right, guy. But yeah, um, 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 what was I ready to say? Um, but ne next time I um, next time I record, bro, you you can pull up. You know what I'm saying? I, you can see the whole process. You feel me? I, you know, let you let you in and see you know what's going on in there, type shit. Shit, I'm down. Fuck it, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can do that, bro. Like that, you know. I, I um. You know, because I already told you how I record, so you know, you know what, you know what you ready coming to. You know what I'm saying? And I know you ain't ready being there. You know, because I'll ask you for your opinion. You know how you feel about this. You know what I'm saying? And shit like that. But you know, but yeah, we, you know, I uh, I make sure that you know we on some shit. Definitely, just hit me up, man. I'm, I'll, all I do is sit on my fucking phone. It's not gonna be missed by me. Trust me. <laughs> all right, bro. Yeah, for sure, bro. So. For my wonderful guest of episode 85 of Inside the Rapper Studio, Lomatic, and our wonderful host of Inside the Rapper Studio, Score Swayze, I'd like to tell everybody thank you very much. And as always, wash your hands, wear a mask, and stay in the house. And wear a condom. That. <laughs> thank you, Lomatic. <laughs> Appreciate it, bro. All right, bro. All right, yo, be safe, yo. You too, man. All right.